Welcome to DarkChin.com. Today we're going to continue talking about the Surface Book, which I unpacked and uh, shot video for. And we're going to talk about some of the things I found so far with the device. First things first is the power brick. I just want to talk about the power brick real quick. Uh, I first thought the power brick it was the same as my Surface Pro 3. And it, for the most part, does seem very, very similar. Except that the Surface Books is a little bit bigger and uh, if you look really really closely at some of the little text over here you'll find out that the uh the power output of the surface pro 3 uh, power uh, power uh, brick here is only about let's see it says uh 12 volts and 2.5 amps the one that comes with the service book actually outputs 15 volts at 4 amps so it's a bit more powerful uh, I sort of found something funny when I was charging this thing because it came with only 8% uh, battery life uh, in it, which is kind of funny because a lot of devices like this come with a bit more, but only got 8% uh, when I opened it up. That when I plugged the Surface Pro 3 brick in, what wound up happening was the statuses for the battery kept saying uh, some of it was charging, not charging, and flipped between charging and not charging uh, while I was in use. And um, it, so it was kind of, kind of behaved a little bit inconsistently. Uh, not that it, it did not causing performance problems but it looked kind of weird when i was uh trying to, I was trying to work with it now it did charge it did charge the device i let it go overnight and charge it 100 percent no problem my guess is that uh it has a bit it's going to be a lot slower charging it if you're not using the actual surface book power supply so something to think about and to keep in mind uh, other things i want to talk about is something that's always um uh, on my mind is obviously this is the this is the i7 with uh, 256 gigabytes of storage and for the most part a lot of folks will find that to be plenty but the one difference with this device is that you can play games on it if you play games on it then some games get kind of big uh, for example uh, if you want to play like something like mass effect or skyrim well those take up at least 20 gigabytes if not more uh, so you know you might find yourself running out of space pretty quickly so you know having a SD card slot here is kind of nice. However, the, what I found is that uh, the SD card slot is is a it only sinks in halfway or partway, like that. See, it doesn't go all the way in. So what I have on order is a little mini drive thing, and with that I should be able to put the, this in there and kind of leave it in there and have more space. So uh, like this one in here is, is a 64 gigabyte micro SD card slot uh, card over here that I can put in. Uh, they can you can get them up to about 200 gigabytes and they may get bigger in the future. So. It's nice to be able to have that as an option. Um, I haven't tested the speed on this yet, so I'll take a look and see if how fast it is and if it'll handle running games on it. Uh, let's see. The other things to look at. Oh, we're trying to open this up. I configured it all. Um, something, some things to be aware of that are uh, quirks with the system. Um, the some folks have complained about flickering screens and actually indeed i had the same problem earlier i was it was flickering like crazy uh and i don't did not know why and part of the, the problems when i found out is that visual studio because i'm a developer i put it on there and hyper v gets installed and i had forgotten that on the surface pro 3 uh, hyper v caused problems with the uh connected uh sleep mode which which uh some if some folks remember was the option of using the pen to kind of double click and get into uh one note quickly it caused problems with it and this time hyper v uh, is, causes problems with the display for some reason and actually causes the flicker uh i went on on to line to the uh the uh, community forums at microsoft and found that mr benjamin mcmillan here had posted something about disabling Hyper-V in the command line. So opening up a, a elevated command prompt and disabling Hyper-V magically resolved the problem. So that was a real funny thing that I found um, that you have to, to be mindful of if you're installing Visual Studio. Uh, other things that uh, are going on is um, the interesting thing is that the, the system does not come with uh, and I, I, this is the, G, the dedicated GPU version. Uh, it has drivers installed for it, obviously. But what you can do is you can actually install the GeForce Experience. Uh, if I can find it. Let's see. There, the GeForce Experience. So if you go to NVIDIA's website, you can actually install the GeForce Experience and run that. And, install, and it'll keep drivers updated as well as perform optimizations on games that you do install. Um, and so it's kind of interesting. So it's nice that you can have, actually have that to tweak performance a little bit uh, on this device. So it's, kind of, so it's kind of nice to be able to do that. So right now it, it shows up that um, I have up-to-date drivers 
and you go to my rig it tells you a little bit more about what you have now it doesn't say what kind of gpu it is it just says a geforce gpu uh, gives you information about the system resolution and so forth so it's kind of nice to be able to have that um, so you can tweak your game so like for example you go to the games tab over here uh, and you can have a look at games and i don't know why it's not showing my games uh okay well all right we'll let this go but you can install this all right let's get rid of that now uh, other quirky things i ran to just so that you know uh the things that that could uh, give you a little bit of grief is the eject button for the or the the unlock button over here to detach the screen you hear that makes nice audible click and you can pull it out and i found funny things happen when you actually switch it over this way now, not, not that it caused a problem but um, you know everything works fine in this in this manner. However, sometimes it, when I do the, un, the und, uh, undock again, the it doesn't always it doesn't behave nice. There, so so the, the click was a little bit louder this time. But sometimes the click doesn't doesn't go right, and so sometimes it it actually actually, actually I wound up getting stuck at one point, which is kind of weird. Um, but it's a little on the iffy side. It works, but you know I had one issue where it was kind of jammed. It eventually resolved itself, but that's something that, that a little funny thing that that may or may not be an issue. One thing, if you do get this, uh, you have to make sure you should make sure that your Windows updates are are good because there actually were some updates that came out recently. Uh, but in particular, it was a hardware update. I'm not sure if they would have fixed, but I, I've read that it fixes a bunch of problems uh, that um, that were bugging these, the system early on, and apparently it has one that wants me to restart with. So. Uh, that do you have it? You know, a look at you know the the some of the quirks that I ran into on uh, the last two days using the Surface Book. Uh, so um, I don't want to extend this one too long, but I want to go into some other issue, other things that you can do with this, uh, like gaming as well as drawing, because a lot of my videos tend to focus on the stylus and drawing. Um, and speaking of stylus, let's take a look at it real quick. Uh, I'll do some comparisons a little later on with other devices I have. See, the tip is much finer, and supposedly it's replaceable. I haven't tried removing the, the tip yet, but uh, I don't think there are any replaceable tips that come with it at this moment, but uh, they should be available soon. The pen uh, does use a quad A battery, and so to get it out, you kind of twist it to clicks, and you kind of pull this part out, and there you go. And there is the quad A battery. Yes, folks, the quad A's do exist. I remember when I did this for the Surface Pro, three people were yelling at me saying that the quad A's don't exist. They do exist. So putting it back in, the same deal. Got the little notch there. You kind of put in a notch for that to go into. Oh, wait. I'm doing it wrong. Ha, ah, there it is. See it this way. There. Helps you line up the this, this part over here. And so this tip is also, uh, does like the eraser part. Uh, it does act as an eraser, and you can launch one note with it. And it uh, has all the functions. There's also a button here. There is a, 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 a button for well instead of having two buttons like the surface pro 3 one this actually is a single button over here the real nice thing about the pen is that it attaches to the side of the system with a nice audible click it'll attach on and it's, and it stays pretty well secured and not, not that it can't be knocked off i have actually lost it in my bag uh, a couple of times but it holds itself quite nicely here so if you're just kind of carrying it around casually this actually should stay in place uh unless you're in a brawling match and uh, wander, you know, hitting people, whatever, bumping the people, they could come off. So it's not, not a, you know, not as maybe secure as a, as a pen loop itself, but it is a much nicer solution. Also, it clicks on the side over here too. So if you're on the go, closing the tablet down, that's weird. This is a little bit less, a little less strong on this side, but you can see that that does hold it. Uh, although it's probably more or less attached to the magnet for the power supply, so that's why it doesn't really do a good job here. But here, it's a lot stronger. So, yeah. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, I'm going to go into a bit more uh, in the aspect of gaming and applications in my next video. Thanks for watching.